So we're installing our speakers today in our 2015 Mazda 3. This is the iTourin. Um, this installation is also good for the 2014 and I believe you can apply it to the 2016 as well. So what we did here is we took off the side panel on the actual uh, passengers or the, the driver's side door. Uh, so a couple of things to note here when you're taking off this door panel is when you actually pull this door panel off here, you have to pull from the bottom, starting from the corners, pulling from the bottom out. Also, second thing, you're gonna want your window down because when you're, when you're pulling the door panel off, uh, it kind of like hooks in a little bit right here. Um, so when you pull this way, you're gonna wanna pull it off like that. And uh, you're gonna run into a situation where the clips are gonna be stuck in the door. You're gonna have these white clips I don't have a mommy right now, but you're gonna have these these white little clips, and uh, they're a pain in the butt to take out. So what you do is, there's a nice little method that I came up with. Um, you take this string here, and then you you take a um, some sort of like flathead screwdriver, and when you when you get to the door, you'll see uh, you want to pull the back of the clip like that. You're gonna want to wrap the string around the clip and then you're going to want to kind of like tighten like this like that and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put some lateral force pull it this way that way the uh, internal uh, shaft in there is shrunk down and then you can pull it right out and it's pretty easy it's a lot less effort normally also um, this is okay if this is hanging around that's that's exactly what it should be doing and uh, the last two things, when you pull off the door, you're gonna have these two white clips here. Uh, there's a little tab on the top here and a tab on the bottom. So when you pull it out, you're just gonna wanna push these tabs down and then pull them out. Once you have these off, once you have the two uh, screws undone, you can pull it off and uh, get to your stock speaker here, which is gonna go next. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take this clip you're gonna to wanna to push down the tab here and simply pull up, okay? The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to identify what size socket you're gonna to need to use to take out the uh, bolts here. Um, for the Mazda 3 2015 and other Mazdas, they like to use the 10, 10 uh, millimeter, so that's what we're using here. I already got it set up, okay? So all four fasteners or bolts are out. And uh, they have some adhesive glue in here. It's, there's, it's nothing too substantial and you can just pull it out just like this. Okay, like that. And there you go, you have your paper speaker that is gonna be replaced by our JL Audio uh, six and a half uh, component speakers. So another thing to note too is uh, uh, the way that Mazda set up this, uh, the speaker configuration is that there is a woofer here and there's no tweeter. Where does the tweeter exist? The tweeter exists right here up in the dash and that is also gonna need to be replaced. So it's important to uh, know that when you're replacing this the speaker system here, you're gonna wanna buy the component setup instead of the coaxial setup. Okay, so we're down in the basement, we're at the tool bench, uh, we're ready to do our modifications to our stock uh, speaker here, um, if you can even call it a speaker. Anyways, uh, pretty much when you take this thing out, it's it's not a simple, you know, take the stock speaker out and then install a new speaker. You have to do some heavy modifications to the actual housing itself, and that is going going to require a specific tool set. So if you come over here and look, uh, First, we're gonna need, obviously, a drill. Uh, we're gonna be uh, drilling some holes down into the plastic to uh, fasten down our new speakers. We're gonna need a Dremel tool with, uh, obviously, Dremel bits. We're gonna, have, we're gonna be using the cutting tool and the sanding tool here. So a standard kit like this costs you like 14 bucks at Lowe's, um, pairing it with that. And then, uh, when we actually install the new speaker here, we're gonna to have to use a soldering iron to solder on the uh, connections here. So when we actually remove this speaker, uh, we have to reuse these connections, right? 
because the Mazda uh, connector, the actual like uh, OEM connector in the car is going to be reused. So we don't want to ruin this and we want to keep this connection. So we got our Dremel tool set up with a uh, cutting bit. Oh, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to cut these bars and uh, pretty much uh, it's going to require a few cuts, a few different cuts, so it might take a little while. But patient, be patient, and just work your way through. Okay hey guys, what you just saw was a breaking bit, okay? Safety is definitely the number one priority. Always wear safety glasses. Cool. So after dremeling out the bars and cleaning up the inside, I was able to put the speaker right over that lip there and then drill four holes and then use the screws that came with the actual JL Audio kit. And I drilled the speaker in like that. So when I turn the speaker over, I have something like this, right? You can see the screws sticking out from right there in a safe location. And then I have these that I have to solder onto the metal pieces there. So that is the next step. All right, so now we have to solder on the positive and negative terminals onto the factory housing. So if you come on in and take a look here, we're gonna take the soldering iron itself and we're gonna apply heat to the back of the positive terminal here, like so. And you could buy this soldering iron at like a Walmart or a Lowe's, nothing high end is needed. Just enough to get this heated up here. And then I'll take the solder on the other side and apply it like that. And then just push it in until there's enough solder there. Try not to breathe in the fumes. And then back up like that. Blow. And let's take a look at the soldering job that we have. So we don't have a microscope to look through. And we can see here that the solder is covering the entire area. And if we look at the back as well, it looks like a solid job. Focus. Cool. Now let's do the other side. Rinse and repeat. Go back like that. Make sure it's heated up. And then I'm gonna push the soldering like that. The soldering iron sucks. Again, try not to breathe in the fumes. If you have a hood, obviously that's the best situation. Okay, if we look at the soldering job there, it looks looks good. And we applied a little extra solder, a little uh, excess, but uh, that's fine, it's not gonna hurt it. All right guys, so we have our brand new speaker installed here. It looks really good, it turned out really well. And if we turn it around to the back, you can see what it looks like in the daylight, like that. I soldered on the factory wiring, the positive and negative terminal to the uh, Mazda connector itself. And yeah, we're ready to uh, install right back into the car here. Uh, this is pretty simple. We just match up where the connector used to be. 
slide it in like so. Okay. I'll do a cross tightening pattern, star pattern. Not that it really matters here, but I think that's like pretty much the rule of thumb for any tightening in any situation. So you get an even distribution of pressure all the way around to prevent warping. And we're done. Final thing is to put in the connector and we're good to go. So now we're gonna be taking out our stock tweeters. And in order to do that, we have to remove the dashboard cover over the tweeter and we have to actually remove the tweeter, which will require uh, two tools. The first tool is going to be the butter knife. This is gonna be used to take off the actual uh, cover. And then we're gonna be using our, uh, what is this called, a, a Nico ratchet, like a screwdriver ratchet tool. And this will be used to get into the, the tight spacing that is uh, over here. Man, this thing's a pain in the ass. Sorry about that. And once you get that off, you can just pull off like so. And that'll expose your tweeter. Now we'll take our ratchet tool and we'll simply go in here like this and begin to loosen. Okay, now we have our second screw out and we can simply just remove our tweeter, pull up like that. And then there's a little clip on here and I'll try to get in here. There's a little clip right there. It's like the factory Mazda tweeter clip. You're just gonna have to remove it by pressing down a little tab here. All right, so I just got done finished dremeling around the tweeter here. And what I did was, is I just applied some pressure and then I popped it out. Um, you can see that I kind of just cut all the way around the edge there. And that allowed me to go on the other side and apply some uh, pressure here and then just pop it right out. So yeah, the factory tweeter's out of the housing now. And now we can clean this up a little bit and we will put our new uh, GL Audio tweeter in there and then use some uh, silicone to pretty much uh, adhere the tweeter or uh, glue it in pretty much. Um, the silicone is really strong and it's, uh, it's, it helps with vibrations too so you know the tweeter doesn't like fall out. Alright so now that we have cleaned up the surface here we're ready to actually install the new tweeter. So I have my tweeter here, and uh, we're just going to leave that uh, that mesh on. We're not going to try taking that off or anything. And then we're going to simply just place it on there like that. All right. Once we place it on there, we can use our uh, silicone and glue it around like this. This will be our final product. And pretty much this is this is really strong. I can't even move this, but the uh, silicone is obviously a little bit uh, squishy, which is good because they'll absorb the vibrations.